all good? All good, man. You want to bring it in or shall I? You go for it, man. Right on. Uh, Welcome to the dirt. I'm Paul Sluggett. <laughs> it's, it's the dirty E, though, isn't it? The dirty <laughs> yeah, E. Yeah, I've done the dirt bit. You always have to do the E bit and then your name. Oh, oh go on then. We'll try it one more time. I'm Paul Sluggett. Welcome to the dirt. E. And I'm Dan Watson. I felt guess. like I wanted to go E by gum. This is Ash Holland's episode. <laughs> Let's bring them in here. Right, tonight for your pleasure, we have uh, a, a three gentlemen, all so, from one area of the world. and All they, from uh, an area of the world with some of the, well, the best, some of the best riding in this country. In this country? Or, well, no, some of the best riding in, in their GB country. As a whole. In GB as a whole. In G- oh, in, G- in GB, okay. <laughs> but, but don't, can you all hear us? I yeah. can hear you just, just now, yeah. I can hear you just now. Mark, you with us? Yeah, I'm I can hear you. Both? Oh, look, they're both chirped up there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> be... things, there was a, a little bit of interruption in, in their connection. Uh, Slogs was just uh, saying that, that you've... Um, got some of the best free riding in this country and that we've we've on massed you in to claim some of the best free riding in great britain but you guys are here representing carve wales which i suppose it would be a bit of a a bit of a faux pas to say that that you know you're not a, a tad nationalistic there maybe amongst you Geogra- geographically i i, I think <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the well, welcome to it all, Carv Wales, made up of on your screen, hopefully the same as mine. We got James Matthews top right, Mark Hybrids bottom right, Mark Vanstone bottom left. Um, they're all joining us from. Would it be fair to say the southern areas of of Wales for all yeah, of us? South Wales, South Wales, perfect, and. Yeah, all been in the scene for a, for a little while. Let's let's delve into a little bit of the the history as such. Tell, tell us a bit about the you know you guys obviously are in geographically the same, um, but you guys have formed a bit of a uh, an online following as such and and regularly meet up and make great big you know sort of, I don't know what they call group rides as such. Um, which I'm still yet to to come up to to Kum Kum, um and, and do that one with you. Maybe that'll happen, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, but yeah, tell us a bit about the yourselves. Where what's your name and where you come from? As as Silla would say. <laughs> right, do you want me to start, guys? James yes, was going to jump in there, but I've got there before him. Oh, basically. <laughs> um... <laughs> I started off as um, back in 17, 2017, 18 was my first electric board, which was an Evolve, like I think probably 90% of people started with, apart from Mark, who was in the boosted era, um, and just found literally it didn't have enough range for me. Being a big guy, the, the thing would do like, I, I literally get half the mileage that the stated for anybody else uh, <laughs> with my size of weight, unfortunately. So the Evolve didn't kick it too long for me. And funny enough, I was looking for the board and, and met James online, who happened to be selling a tramper. So I thought, right, I'll have a go with that. And he talked me into it. And we met up, um, had a little ride. I bought his tramper off him. And literally within two weeks, it was just total coincidence. I've got this magic hot tub. Now, Mark will tell you all about this. Um, when I sit in it with a bottle of brandy on a Friday night, for some reason, I always buy something on a on a Monday morning. There's always things turning up. And this just happened to be a, a £3,500 Apex Predator, uh, the first ever one. It just came up that night as I was sitting there. And I thought, well, do you know what? I'm going to have a bit of that. And I did. I bought it. Lee rang me up and said, because they were only five made originally. Um, so he came down and delivered mine. He'd also delivered marks the week before. And really, that's, that's my step into mountain boarding. Nice. I, I can't say I've got much further, truthfully. Um, I'm still a bindings only on the front guy. Um, and still haven't got the whole 
the concept of locking myself in and going 50 mile an hour down a mountain sort of thing. I stick, I, I'm, I'm sort of like in the middle. I think James is really our mountain border. <laughs> hey, man. Are you having a good time? Great. Absolutely fantastic. Well, that's, that's so all that really bad. <laughs> we, we just need more sun, don't we? We need to, this rain has got to go away. We've got to do something with our climate because. I mean, that was the whole reason of the bouncing board, realistically. But my body, I don't bounce like I used to. So maybe the the board is waterproof. I'm not so much. You know, I've had a couple of little spills of this. So uh, I don't really go out in the rain. I push it as, as far as I can. But such a difference, you know, being able to not not to worry about it getting wet, basically. Yeah. And what about you then, James? Um, myself, uh, my first electric skateboard, I guess, technically was a mountain board. It was um, some weird contraption uh, from 8-Ball called the Bigfoot with these huge 10-inch tyres, uh, lead-acid batteries, really twitchy channel trucks. Yeah. But it rode over everything. Uh, I guess I was hooked from there, really. Uh, and uh, the mountain boards are ideal. Um, for our area where we ride, you know, mm -hmm. you can sort of go everywhere. Um, um, all weathers. What is your current board now, then, James? I'm uh, on a tramper, basically. You're on a yeah, tramper. um, I've been riding trampers the last few years. Uh, they're, they're awesome, as you guys know. Indeed. And it can do all I need it to do. It rides all weathers, all seasons, all year. I assume you're on a spur gear then. I'm on gear drive now, yeah. I've had the spur gear, the OBD. Um, yeah, wicked. Yeah. Because the Predators are all on uh, gears now, aren't they? Apart from maybe uh, uh, Beeren, yeah. maybe. and They were, uh, they were doing chains. But they stopped chains. chains. <clears throat> yeah. Is Eland still on the chains? He still yeah. is. Yeah. Still on the chains. Um, I think they're rad. I gotta say, oh, I, like, I like the sound of them. They look fucking brilliant. Yeah, I gotta say, they are they are cool as fuck. I mean, I, do, I assume that they're they're rugged enough. Elan and and Beeren are certainly not known for for shying away from <laughs> from <laughs> testing products hard, shall we say? Um, but yeah, Mark yourself, uh, 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 another representative for for Apex there. I don't even know. Assume how you're on a hands. predator. <laughs> I am. I am. Yeah. Um. So 2017, um, my mate sent me a text message, basically saying a screenshot, saying, "Look what I've just bought," and it was a boosted board. I was like, "You know what? Fuck this, man! You only live once. I'll join you." And it was literally then got my boosted board. Same situation of what Mark said. Wasn't getting as much as the range, but it was at. Abel into electric because even beforehand I was doing that I was like my background is like skateboarder and um, never really did a transition or anything like that it's more like in the streets which is like kind of like the same now when the electric main board in the scene transition is a bit way beyond my end um, always told Lee that basically I was like nah fuck this I'm not going to get an electric main board being strapped in is no um I've even done interviews which are live on Nelson's channel of basically saying not interested in bindings, not interested <laughs> in electric metal boarding. And, and here we are. Apex Predator. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's crazy, <laughs> bro. Honestly, I was so fucking like tunnel vision to the whole idea of it. And don't get me wrong, bindings are scary. People have had this conversation, you're strapped in and everything. Like, I'm the same as Mac, I do half bindings not mm -hmm. fully strapped in. But as soon as I got over that level of fear, mate, I love it, man. I, I cane it down the countryside and all. I, I really enjoy myself. Like, I mean, look, you, you're speaking to, to two people, despite the, the years that we've got in the game with mountain boarding and being used to strapped in, who ultimately, we've gone through that as well. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? We both skateboarded, or, or, or you know, in whatever manner beforehand, and you know, you, you build up your experiences as you do. But I still remember my first day on a mountain board, you know, like even 20, 20 plus years ago. And 
and that feeling you're right it is it is an intimidating thing um people get around it with snowboarding don't they you know by by it being that's a standard unless you're talking like the modern wave of like free riding where they're they're chucking away the bindings now and just riding oh, that's gnarly that's gnarly <laughs> yeah. um but but yeah ultimately everybody goes goes through that and it is an intimidating feeling being strapped in and that, and then like mark i'm gonna go mark v and mark h for the third I'll just call me go hybrids is easier okay yeah perfect so we go mark and hybrids and uh you know go, that feeling you're saying about not being strapped in around the rear do you do you guys ride heel straps as well i've got heel straps on my board but i push them up i do push. use them up now and again it's something i want to do hence i put them on i didn't yeah. have i didn't have them originally but i put them on now and i've started to try it um i had a fall going back a couple of years ago where i smashed my arm quite badly in about four places and i've still got this fear if the board goes i'm gonna go with it at least with the bindings i can step out but i've probably had a few issues without the heel straps where i've and the one i actually stepped out with my back foot and the board mm -hmm. went forward and because I had um, the Liat knee braces on, I couldn't get up. I literally, my, my, my left leg was out in front of me, and the other one was still stuck in the strap, and I was still stuck on the side of the road. Uh, it sounds <laughs> funny now. It wasn't to me. There were cars coming no. and everything. Uh, no. So That's Mark's audition for Strictly Come Down to that is. I think it's that commitment. <laughs> You've got to step over that, that boundary, and I've still got a fear in me. And do you know what I find the hardest part is when I stop, not when I'm actually, when I'm moving, it's when I stop, my brain starts thinking, well, what do I do now? I can't just step out. But if I'm still on a hill or I'm on a bit of an incline, that's where the panic comes in then. And I'm thinking, oh, now I don't use um, full speed reverse either. I've got reverse on there, um, but just the slow reverse so I can go back. So basically, once I stop... Smart reverse. Unless I've got something to grab hold of, it's like starting to skate the go all over again, really. Especially Kung Khan. Kung Khan's got some really big inclines. And where we stop, we just stop and I'll be all... And I stand there thinking, what do I do now? Uh, how do I keep the board fr from moving, really? Yeah. You fight, fight, eye up a nice rock to wedge your, wedge yeah, your, yeah, wedge yeah. your wheel against. I've, 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 I've got all those rocks in my head now. I know all those places <laughs> I can jam my board when I go around. <laughs> my, uh, James. Oh, well, you can always you can always carry your largest twig in your pocket, <laughs> and then you start just sort of ram it under one of your back wheels. <laughs> Put it on a chain so you keep it in your pocket; you don't lose it. <laughs> James, yeah. you look like at one point you was trying to. Yeah, yeah um... yes, please, sir. I've got something to say, funny. Uh, myself, but uh, I'm full bindings all the time. Uh, Elan feet. So sort of fully committed to it. Hmm. Um, I've done the thing where I stop suddenly and I fly out of the board and my trainers are still attached to the bindings. That's quite fun. I've done that several times. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, sort of, I find they save you more than they cause you problems other than slow speed, just kind of crap falling, I call it. Yeah. You know, reminds that, me like in your head. falling still hurts. <laughs> yeah, it can still hurt. But I find at high speed they save me loads more crashes than than uh, not having them, you know. Yeah, I think um, the, the yeah. tendency to skid out as opposed to fall, uh, yeah, is, is more more evident when you're when you stay with the board. I mean, it's 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 an argument that's a, that's as old as mountain board in itself is the bottom line. With, with, with the electric boards, I noticed they're so heavy and rooted. Um, they generally don't tip over, I find. So as long as you just get low enough, the board's not going to tip and you're still going to be upright, you know? Um, yeah. That's the theory anyway. <laughs> that's well, a bad theory. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, de de there's, definitely, there's definitely thought to that. You know, like, think of Jay Adams on, on the banks of Cali there when he's laid out like doing a doing a, a a squealing fucking power slide the reality is is that if he decks it there all that's going to happen is he's just going to go onto yeah. the deck and nothing's yeah. going to be a problem but you know if, if the same person comes and does a, a big front side slide screeching and that but standing up and that board suddenly bites well then they're going to go a lot further 
than just going plop onto the deck. So it's kind of that that mentality, isn't it? The the with the sliding. It's certainly one of the things. Well, it's the first thing that any non-powered people learn is the power slide and the effectiveness of a J turn. You know, in the hill, and you know, again, something that would always stop you from rolling is going horizontal to the hill isn't it and so if yeah, you gravity. try and stop on a j turn whether that be uphill because of power or downhill it, that's that's your way forward on those isn't it um i feel so the, the instructional j turns comes with the mbs bindings you know <laughs> I, i've had the leaf flip come the j turn and, and reading it you know oh yeah that's yeah. it of course all the, the the predators and that come with um come with the uh, MBS bindings as standard, don't they? Um, uh, and and hill straps as standard. The, am I right? Yeah, in thinking no, you, options, said, you, you select them. options. Ah, okay, fair enough. Um, but I'm right in thinking that there's now a change in the draw. There's been a the, your first predator mark is different to your predator hybrids. Would that be right? I've got both. I've got the original, but I've got a newer version as well with the jump drives. But Mark's had his upgraded now as well. We've got all the upgrades on it, so we've got all the new stuff. The old, the old ones were the moon drives. Um, That's they, right. They, That's right. They were inherent problems with those uh, breaking cogs because they were plastic for, for a while. So they've upgraded them all now. But I, I do still have one actually. My my son, I bought that one, and my son had it, uh, and I upgraded and bought myself the new one. So I've got. I'm running both at the moment. So the, the the jump drives are now metal on metal, are they? Yeah. Ah. I see. I've still to this day, you know, uh, me and Slogs went and rode. Um, where did we ride? Up near you guys? No, Snowden. Snowden. No, 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 not Snowden. Um, Malvern. Penny Van. Lee. Pen no, Malvern, Malvern Hills. Malvern Hills. Yeah. Um, and but we have rode all three of them. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And I thought I'd bust a gear there. But it turns out I hadn't. Um, and do you know what? I, I've only ever ridden the plastic gears and I've never managed to bust one on, on the, the trample ones, to be fair. But I know plenty of people have. You've mashed a couple, haven't you, Slogs? Yeah, when I first had my board, when I first got an electric, um, it took me a while to get used to let the throttle off when you're in the air. Mm. And, yeah. and I went through, I went through three or four gears until I sort of because it, it was a complete a complete different riding technique when and when I first got it. Mm. But now I don't I don't use I don't go through gears at all. No. No, I think I think the more you get used to that throttle control, isn't it? The 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 less wear you put on your boards, really. Ultimately it don't matter which, which one it is. So do all Here's a question for you. Do all of you only ride e mounting boards or do any of you ride uh, other electric vehicles? Uh, I, I, I solely just ride my Apex better than I. I think that's a Vanstone question. I've got a number. Yeah, I, I do ride. Um, I've just sold a few actually, but. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> oh, hold up. Wait a minute. Let me change my <laughs> view here on the yeah. screen. So that so I the light is like down that end. You're left. Oh, look at that. So there's the two pre the two pressures in the middle. Um, and there's well, I've just made that on the end because I upgraded all my predator, but so I put a new deck on a new drive. So I ended up with loads of bits left over. Um, so I literally bolted it all together onto this mounting board. So I've never stood on it yet. I've still never gravity. Ridden, uh, ridden a gravity board, but there's always this year to go out and try it. Um, I just need heel straps for that. Uh, I think my oh, there's a Lacroix. My Lacroix is down there. There's my that first. That's a Tipo, is it? Uh, no, that's a Naz, the Nazare, the Super Sport. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's why I tend to ride round round Kumkar. It's a, a cruiser. It, it'll do 45 miles an hour, but is it you can stand on it all day? It's huge. I was going to say then, it's supposed to have silly range as well, isn't it? That, that one hasn't. That's the smaller one. I did have the large one. I sold that just before Christmas. Um, and down in the far corner, you see my first ever uh, Evolve GT, which still runs. That's right in the corner down there. I didn't see that one. 
but that still goes fine. Oh, yeah. It's just five or six miles. Um, battery now, this has got battery stack, but I work in an industrial estate and I have to wait for drivers quite often in the afternoon. And that's perfect because I literally just ride around the industrial estate while I'm waiting for someone to come in. And it's, it's, a, it's a snazzy little board. The scooter is my missus. She hasn't mastered the mountain board, but she does like to come. So she stands on the scooter. Nice. Don't lie, Mike. It's yours. Yeah, it's, uh, it's mine. <laughs> <on the end. laughs> it's, actually, it's actually faster than my board. So it goes a lot further as well. So that's it. Um, what about you, James? Are you are you a um, uh, yeah, an omni boarder? I, I, uh, I predominantly ride um, my like, tramper mountain board. Uh, but I've also got a mellow drive on um, a longboard style loaded bamboo deck, Carver CX surf truck on the front, and I use that along the beach in Swansea. It's like a six mile smooth path, and uh, it's just like surfing along the coast there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really cool. So it's totally different. It's really um, quite low power, and it's just a different feel, ride feel. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's the the main reasoning behind us still pursuing the dirt e as a as a podcast is because there is such a difference between all these things, um, you know, and and there is not much representation these days for e mountain boards. Um, so we're obviously still super stoked that you guys are, are sending it and, and, you know, encouraging such big group rides. You get like a, quite a, quite a number turn up, you know, I mean, I'd like to say they're filmed well, but James, <laughs> I don't want to address this subject too much, but maybe, well, maybe but need to... There was, there was an Insta uh, GoFundMe campaign, but it never came to fruition. You know, I am uh, hoping to borrow one at some point. Well, I did see I, I started off the GoFundMe, <laughs> but no, no one actually put into it, James, unfortunately. You started by 2 pounds 50 still in there, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I just grabbed my phone out and try and record the moment, really. Um, yeah, we get sort of 50 or 60 in the summer. The uh, Whitson Bank holiday weekend now. Four days, eight rides. Um, about half of them are smooth, and the other half are off road. So it's a mix for for different vehicles, you know. Well, that's a and that's a mix of of PVs. It's everything. And we've we've tended to get more EUCs come in the last. Well, last year definitely didn't we? We probably we were probably yeah. about fifty fifty last year. Fifty uh, one wheelers. Uh, one wheel as well everything yeah. you, you name it they all come so we, it's, it's yeah. a really good setup. they come with the vibes of a one wheel guys are such fun aren't they girls but they're really chill lovely people yeah well you've got to be with a top speed of like 12 mile an hour <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly you're not going anywhere fast uh, <laughs> having said that but the best ones now are pretty quick uh 30 miles an hour some of the best one wheels you know benjamin bed is doing his thing yeah have, well, you mean, had any, have you had any problems? Because it because that particular ride that you do is is massive, like eighty yeah. odd rides. Do you get any problems with authorities or local people because you're bringing that many people into the area now and it's grown really <clears> quickly? It's the fourth fourth year now, and so far so good is all I can say to that. You know, yeah, and uh, long long may it be. And we work it, the timings out. It's like the Kumkan Forest Drive is only open to the public. It's after only hours. Between, uh, up till four o'clock is the last time a car can go in. So we tend to work the rides around the, the timing. So as they're leaving, we also share that with uh, Mountain Bikers Mind, which is the only the only other issue. But but they're pretty good with us. They, they don't really mind. They, they've they got their own off-road trails, which don't really affect us. Mm -hmm. um, and we all seem to get out pretty well. The county council actually own it. And they're fine with us. They they could just go. They haven't said anything. We've been waiting for them to say something. But we're respectful to everybody. We don't cause any problems. We we haven't really had any major accidents on any of those sites. So we have never had to. The, the, the problem is you're up in a mountain and, and you're eight, nine miles from your car and your car mm. park. So if you did have a problem up there, it's going to be like, so like a, a medivac or something. So the, I think the first time we have anything like that, we're going to start seeing problems. But the rest of the rides are generally out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, Brecon is probably the second most popular. The only one is Cheddar Gorge, I think, on the Friday, which they do. Um, and they literally, I don't know if you've ever been to Cheddar, 
but they ride the gorge from top right. to bottom right the way through on the road. And uh, it's not something I've ever turned up to because I don't fancy it myself. But uh, John Goff does that. And uh, they, they all seem to enjoy it. But again, we've we've never had a never had an issue. Touch wood. That's good. That's really good. It's got to, but you've got to be respectful as a new sport. You've got to be respectful going into these places because well, you don't want to fuck it up for yourself in the future, really. No. Yeah, we we try we try and explain right like when we uh, come camp forest drive before when all the London lot come down, they all got super carby trucks. And we had an incident before where they had speed wobble, and we had to explain to people then that if you're going up this mountain, you can have to tighten your trucks. So we do try our best to like feed the information to people before they go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you said the mountain bikers have got their own trails there. Mm-hmm. Can they, can they be ridden? Yeah, well, yeah, some, some can be. Some of them. The low ones, they're, they're, they're graded um, black, red, green. I don't know exactly how they work with different levels. So we yeah. can go on the lowest ones. We could, yeah. You know, I, yeah. I've ridden around the pump track there. I didn't yeah. even know that was there until you told me. I had no <laughs> idea it was by the car park, honestly. Oh, I've, I've, I've still never seen it. It's, it's the weirdest <laughs> pump track in the, the world. Tiny. It's ti- <laughs> yeah, tiny and yeah. It, I swear all of it's uphill. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. Esh- is it Escher? Oh. Anyhow. Um, the, 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 one t- thing about Kumkan, sorry, uh, there is an off road bit which we go onto the mountain, uh-huh. uh, which a lot of the guys can enjoy because it's a big, wide expanse and it is real off road for maybe three, four miles over the top with lovely views of the Bristol Channel and such like. Is that where um, there's some ruins of... Uh, yeah, Barlam. there's ancient, ancient burial mount on Barlam. Um, yeah, it's fab. That's quite accessible. We've had loads of people right there, you know? Yeah. Um, I forgot what I was going to say with that. Yeah, we... Oh, so me and Emlyn came to Kumkan once and made it to the car park and his, his board knacked on him. And I was like, well, I'm not going to go and ride it on my own because uh, as you said Mark, you know like the temptation uh to play is too much of me and you end up spannering yourself somewhere up there you know you, you, it's not going to be pleasant um but yeah safety in numbers as such yeah. but 60 or 80 well that's a that's a lot a lot of people isn't that that's a lot a lot of people yeah it's i think it, it was the first time we had that many last year and you it's the weather was perfect. It's, it's difficult to have one person that everyone will listen to. It's like the, the you see people go on their own, the one wheel is tend to go on their own. We t- we'll get to we always have a group talk before we go off and everyone talks, but everyone goes and especially the EUCs, they they like full speed. You know, they don't like to hang around with everybody else, they're off. So it's difficult to have one person in charge of the whole thing. There's probably about five people um that, that over overall look after all of it. Um, and they come over on the Friday, and we always do it on a bank holiday weekend. So we do, like, well, James knows the itinerary. We've got about three or four rides. Do you have four on the Saturday, haven't you? Uh, it starts Friday, Cheddar Gorge in the, the day, in the evening, Cardiff Chill Ride. Saturday morning is the Blind Avon onto the oh, beacons on the top of the mountain, off road. In the evening is the Come Calm. So you've got the smooth and off road mountain biking over the mountain. Sunday's the Hnefli Coastal Path uh, along the beaches. In the evening, Avon Bike Park. After hours again, when it's sort of in the summer, it's light till late, there's nobody about. Mm. Uh, then on the Monday morning, we've got the Mumbles very early. So that gets busy. On the bank holiday morning, uh, again, it's sort of cruise on the, uh, the beach and the coast and then forest dean going back out to england on the monday evening some of the tra- some of the trails there so yeah eight rides mm-hmm. four days half of them are sort of more off-road challenging and the other half sort of smoother and for everyone nice well i can i can attest so, to forest the dean being absolutely amazing Yes, yeah, um, awesome. Yeah. And we, we, yeah, we can attest a, a Brecon being absolutely incredible as well. Um, well, so, uh, uh, and but yeah, I don't know any of those other rides. What what weekend did you say this was on? 
This is the 24th of May, so uh, Friday of that Whitson Bank Holiday weekend. So the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Bank Holiday, Monday. Nice. So, so people tend to come, is, just come dip in and out, come to whatever rides they can, you know? Is the Cardiff one a city a city centre ride, or do you go through the park? Do you go through the park go, and stuff, yeah? Go through a park along the river, across the barrage, but there is a little skirting around the city element. I, I say you see the Millennium Stadium, but we try not to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Although that could be worth it. If you're going to be filming stuff, well, in fact, actually, if anybody else <laughs> apart from you, James, is going to be filming stuff, that would be what I'd need to be filming. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cobblestones outside. <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny story about that, actually, because we've always... It's been a standing joke with James and his camera. So when we were out the other week, he said, right, do me a favour. And he said, film me going down here. I said, yeah, no problem. He gave me his camera, well, his phone, with a case on it. Now, I can't see anything at all. I said, James, I, I can't see. Oh, no, you can't see. you just got to point it. So he can't <laughs> actually see. So I understand what his film is about. He can't actually see what he's doing. He just aims <laughs> the camera with the case closed. So, yeah, but, but actually, the last couple of weeks he's getting he's getting better. I think he's got a new case actually. Oh, oh. is it safe? Yeah. Uh, no, that would be a good plan. Though. That's <laughs> what I need. You've, you've solved more of my problems there, Dan. Okay. Secret okay. case. Not not just a face you want to fuck huh? up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> say fuck or fuck up. But, yeah, but uh, both. <laughs> Both at the, the same time, please. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, bring from the base. Um, yeah, so well, that's certainly something to be looking forward to, eh? And and not too far away on the calendar. Certainly, probably by the time this six gets weeks, up. six weeks. That that's basically how Carl Wales formed. I would say it was a big instrumental part in it. Uh, it was about that time we did the first group ride, wasn't it, guys? Yeah, and. Um, they started to get a bit of a buzz, and that was a big part of the formation of Car Wales, the offshoot from Car, Car UK. Well, I, think, I think it was easier as well, because obviously, fair play, James does hold most of the group rides and everything. And fair play, James, you've done a hell of a lot of work this year and the previous years and everything as well. But what, um, we, did was, what we did with Car Wales, we separated ourselves from, not separated, but like, Carb UK is it's just the, over the bridge it's you know we want to try and get our own people then around us who is who love the same things that we do and it it worked it really did it worked yeah without a doubt i mean i i i was uh used to knock around on carve a bit back in the the covid sort of day <laughs> and and obviously remember all you guys um from around that sort of time and there was a good community going on in there, but certainly in the more urbanised areas of the the country. You know, I, I was essentially just keyboard warrior in it from from down down the dark. We've all done it. Cornwall, um, <laughs> <laughs> Billy No Mates, um, who had a board that was that he was using. But yeah, the, the fact that you guys had that offshoot and and have got. You know, do you have much involvement from North Wales as well within North Wales? Do you do you... something we want? We've had this conversation before. Uh, we've never actually like arranged it. I'm I, I'm just throwing this at you now, guys. But originally, we were thinking about doing like a little tour or something up. Uh, I there is people in our group from at that neck of the woods and everything as well. But a lot of our people from who are in the group are like South Wales. Yeah. It is well, a lot like... Where does the TAF title <laughs> go from and to? That, that goes from Brecon to Cardiff, doesn't it? Uh, it doesn't go yeah, north... So that... it, it goes, does it not go north of Brecon, though, as well? Uh, and not that I'm aware of. Oh, I thought it went... Right, I thought it went, you know, north, uh, south to north, or it, whichever way you're going. <laughs> north to <laughs> south. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, but, I, yeah, I could be wrong. But there's, I mean... The, the sections of the Taft Trail that we rode were incredible because um, yeah. I, I, I think a lot of it was was old mining or, or railway lines and stuff like Ra that. Railway a lot, railway a lot of it, isn't it? And there's some reservoirs. I've done a little bit of a top bit uh, with my friend Scott around the reservoir there down. 
And then I've done some at the bottom from Cardiff, but not joined it all together as of yet. Yeah. But the summer is a time, go on these long journeys. That's it. You should definitely, there's definitely riding to be had in North Wales as well. That much is for certain. <laughs> yeah, we've got Mike Bew in mid, mid Wales. We keep planning to, to get to ride with him as well. That's kind of the middle of Wales. I think the reason for the bias to the south is just because the population of Wales, the M4 corridor, the vast yeah. majority of the <laughs> I agree. They live, live it in there. But uh, I think there's some awesome uh, countryside and scenic places to ride more remote in Wales. Well, that's it. I mean, it's uh, it's it's like us saying, oh, you know, I should have more involvement with the people up in, in Newcastle. When the reality is, it's fucking miles away. <laughs> and it, we are talking about countries here. So, um I'm sure that there will be, there must be, you know, decent little little communities going on up there around the land. No, and maybe um, you'll see and, and, and uh, plenty of terrain that you've not sniffed out yet. Yeah, that's it. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, it's always nice finding a new spot, isn't it? You know, you, you love your old faithfuls, but uh, none touched. You know, I think yeah. some of the, some of the problems we have with that as well is like if you're talking if you're driving three or four hours to get somewhere and back. And also you've only got, we've got to base the group rides around the person with the, the, the less range, basically. Yeah. So if you're looking yeah. at someone's got 15 miles, you're, you're doing an eight hour drive to do a 10 hour, a, a 10 mile ride, which is- And you also need 80 plug sockets somewhere to recharge your buggers. I've got <laughs> yeah, them, I've got yeah. them in the back of my van. I have, I've got to recharge. I can charge mine, but I'm not charging everyone else's as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, well, to be fair, those dogs, if 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 half of them are EUC riders, then they've probably got at least two hundred mile range in the bloody things anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I still don't true. understand that. I swear that our batteries, like on the mounting boards, surely they can't be that much. Like they have, they yeah. have bigger batteries for the EUCs. And that's where, where is it inside the hub? In the all on the casing. <laughs> Dan, yeah. I, I just thought it was that like, we were just like we were just running two wheels. They're only running one, so it's only half the amount of battery use. Surely that's what how it works. No, but they use yeah, short that, load, that's... so you're using half the amount of battery power. Surely we should have double the range. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like uh, we're typically on twelve S, aren't we? Most of us in skaters now. I know ten um, S back in the day and the Quas eighteen S. I think a lot of those EUCs are at least 24, you know, in series and right. more 30 and such like. It's got a hell of a lot of batteries. Lot I of suppose if they're using tiny little cells and, and literally making the, the wiring loom as such or the, the PCB to wrap in all those cavities yeah. and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And they'll, they'll, they'll have two chargers, a lot of them. They'll use, yeah, two chargers to charge one EUC. Oh. I don't even understand yeah. how they even pick up in UC and put it in the back of their car. It's so heavy. Yeah. Are they? I don't, yeah. I've never tried to oh, lift it. Really heavy, like. Really heavy. Ridiculous. They, they, they're very easy to tow. People tow them like a, a trolley handle, like a suitcase, but it is the lifting into the car. Could be a bit like a motorbike situation having a ramp, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, well, I've got one of them in my car. You might have a charger, Mike, but I've got a ramp. I can speed load in mine. <laughs> like that like, like, the like Knight Rider into the into the back of the buddy. I need that for the scooter. The scooter's the same. It weighs an absolute ton. And that's the same thing, James. That's got two charges as well. Yeah. I don't know, I'm assuming they just go. do it do it twice as well, but it's so heavy to actually lift it off the floor. But yeah. look how batteries have come along. I mean, look at the, the days of the boosted Mac. I'm I'm a, what mileage did you get of them in back in 2017, 18? Six miles, seven miles, maybe yeah. so like that. I, hold up, hold up. Who did you just look at for that then? I know I was thinking that. Who, who did you? Who told you how I'm much? Look, I'm look. I'm looking at my boards. <laughs> I've still, still got it. It's a relic. There's not someone off screen going. Uh, uh, no, no. Six, <laughs> six miles. <laughs> yeah, it's been six miles. Easy. Oh rah. That's that, that's like a trip to the shops, isn't it? Really. Pretty much like now, yeah. Definitely have to plan a, a charge into a group ride with that kind of range, isn't it? You know, 
Yeah, but that's the best thing about it. Back in 2017, when I had these boosted balls, I, I, I don't ride Cardiff City Centre that much anymore, but I would rip around the place all the time. You know, I, I, I've had police stand on my board, everything. But now I, it's, it's a bit hit and miss with it now with City riding. Yeah, I, I got to admit, I'm, I'm glad I live urban. Um, oh, sorry, not urban. I, I live in, yeah. in, yeah. in, in so a town. Well. That, yeah, if I go that way, within 100, not even 100 metres, I'm in fields. So, you know, it's uh, I, I thank my lucky stars. I just have to cross a few roads for sort of access between between rides because I don't like it. I don't like that's it. One of the reasons, oh, it scares the shit out of me. That's one of the reasons why I got the um, the electric mating board because police. I I had a Lacroix Lone Star before that, and to have that, I would be devastated if I got caught and it got you know taken off me or something. It's like a five six grand board. It's ridiculous. But these now, these boards, they can take us anywhere. And, and that's what I want now. I just want to be in the middle of nowhere, no one bothering me, and yeah. just it, it just enjoy myself. Like That's it. So what what battery, talking of batteries, I think, what are you guys all running? What battery packs? What, what range are you getting now? <laughs> what range are you getting now? I assume you've, you've got a reasonably decent-sized uh, battery pack to, as you say, allow for for the brandy in the hot tubs and stuff <laughs> whatever comes in the apex too so even i don't know i get about 25 roughly about 25 miles out of that that's, that's good that's a million miles better than what i get out of mine <laughs> that's for sure no, uh, no that's pretty good um, um, me and james ride ride kumkan quite often and we always come down with roughly the same don't we on your tramper batteries i don't know about if that's the same size yeah, what what are you on, James? I'm on the two year old twenty thousand lipos uh, I got with my Tramp OBD, yeah. and uh, yeah, getting very good mileage, um, sort of twenty fun miles, I say. Uh, yeah. If you take it real yeah. slow, you can go obviously go further. I've noticed I'm pushing higher amps now with the Vest HP. Yeah, and, uh, it, yeah, they're good, aren't it? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, uh, you've got the power there, but if you use it, it sucks it out the battery. But uh, at least you've got it when you want it. You just got to be a bit kind of cautious if you're going on a long ride. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah, certainly where, old, where a lot of my battery has, has gone yeah. these days. <laughs> Blip it, blipping, going up the hill, pulling wheelies. <laughs> that's it. Um, yeah, you're on twenty thousand, uh, twenty thousands, aren't your slugs? I'm on exactly the same as James. <clears throat> yeah, and I get about. 20 miles out of my mind, about 20 miles, but I, I don't, I only ever ride tarmac to get to the dirt. I don't, I don't go oh. around riding tarmac at all, so I don't really get, I, so I'll get less range, really. Definitely. Mm. What about, what about you, Robert? Are you on a, on a, a bigger pack as such? No, I'm on the same, t- uh, the 12S6P. Um, Probably seems like what well, Mark is about like 20, 25 miles, but it it all depends on the conditions you're you're riding and, and the tire pressure and everything as well. Yeah, so... yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, yeah. like we, it's only eight mile to the top of uh to the top of bloody Snowden, but I'm telling you, you uh, and we had to walk part of it, but we come down, and by the time we got back to base camp, we had fuck all left, did we? <laughs> we were, yeah, we were, we rinsed it, didn't we? Um, but yeah, I think I think I'm lucky if I get like I'm only on a on a little eighteen six fifty pack there on the lithium iron, and I yeah. I'm lucky if I get like thirteen mile these days with the up dampage. Yeah. Yeah. But how much weight have you saved compared to like my twenty lipos? Do you reckon? Well, I don't know across. I don't know about on the uh, versus lipo, but definitely versus those bigger twenty one hundred packs. I mean, twenty seven hundreds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When we did that uh, ride round Nottingham for Tramper, they those they were a lot bigger, weren't they? That battery box was a lot bigger. They were all on the big boy decks and. Yeah, it was. They were noticeably heavier. 
noticeably heavier but it, i suppose it depends how you pack it and what it's made out of and what other stuff you got going on in the board as well really as to how it feels yeah. like the the apex predators that i've written that they seem light even with the bigger bigger batteries do you know so yeah definitely definitely setup comes into it that's for sure um but i would like I think that's I think that's going to be the big development when it eventually comes, if we can have lighter batteries with the same power, you know. You pick up a mountain board, electric mountain board, without the battery, and uh, it just feels so light, you know. Mm. Yeah. I, I if, think... you were, if you ride your electrics for, like, ages and ages and then jump on a normal mountain board, oh. it's just it, – the, the feeling is so weird. Like, just, like, they feel like a feather under your feet. It's weird. Yeah. I bet it'd be really easy to kind of topple over, wouldn't it? You haven't got our weight pulling you, <laughs> down, pulling you down, you know? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's definitely... <clears throat> I'd, I'd, I'd like a little bit more range, but I, I wouldn't necessarily want to oh. sacrifice it for too much for too much extra weight. Well, James yeah. has got the new... Um, it's an Omni, isn't it? Um, it's a swappable pack that, that actually goes onto the if you build it onto the board and it's just a latch that you can carry another battery with you literally pop it off and then slide yours back in what like a like a like a drill uh, it's, it's very much like a camera locking mechanism clip we can lock a camera to a tripod and, and attach it right uh, a friend of mine he's very talented in cat car mechanic and work with electric cars and such like and uh, i've had an idea for a couple of years for swappable battery pack yeah uh, and he put it into reality for me basically so uh, i've got the the tramper dog bone with an aluminium base so much like the battery pack normally attached to and then there's this clip uh and my battery box attaches to the clip and disconnects uh and then you just plug in the power so basically i can have lighter packs swappable packs um and kind of walk into somewhere just carrying your batteries rather than carrying all your board to charge. And yeah, it really that, has. It's, it's good. That, that that's rad. That plus, I suppose I live at like the worst cap, case scenario flex. as well. You can get yeah. your board away from the battery pack if something were to go wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's possible. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. So uh, yeah, I think swappable batteries are great, and obviously having lighter ones, then more lighter batteries to get that. That more responsive feel, you know. Yeah, I mean the the the, the one thing we say about d battery development and stuff, and how it'd be nice to have a a battery that gave us the same sort of range. I mean, we're we're kind of skirting around the fact that there is a difference in power delivery between the types of battery as well. Like a, a the the lipos seem to be, you know, they're, they've got a lot more punch throughout their definitely. You know, when it gets into the lower quarter. There's still lipos still have a bit of punch where lions seem to drop off a little bit. They're a bit sluggish, don't they? Yeah, they, they certainly do. I mean, I don't know what they're. I, I've 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 written both, and I find the lions are better for like endurance, maybe longer range, but they're not quite as much jump as you say, you know. So it yeah. depends horses to courses, you know. This is it. This is it. Um, I just want a battery, like a plug-in charge, and that's it. Happy yeah. days. Well, that that was. I, I started off with lipos, and and that was exactly why the, for the reason that I end up changing for a balance. A, a balance. Yeah. That's one other great thing I've done with this mod. Sorry to jump in there. It's got a BMS module connected, so you it's using lipos connected to a BMS. You literally just charge one plug to power, like you do with a regular charger. There's no balance cables to plug in anywhere. It's just one charging point. That's pretty and good, man. XT30, yeah, it's on my Insta. I'll, uh, I'll show you later. So I, I thought, uh, this actually came up recently, I yeah. thought um, that, that that was standard uh, as as part of the tramp, or, you know, the, the, the BMS. Or the, it, within yeah, the, 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 uh, it is now. It is now. It wasn't two years ago. I've retro done the BMS. Yeah. Got you. Got you, got you. Yeah. Um, oh, perfect. So are you... Are you in your van? You're not in your van at the moment, are you, Mark? Or are you? No, I'm in. I, I'm in a porter cabin. Oh my God. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, you gone from the luxuries of a of a caravan of a of a van to a to a port <laughs> cabin. Nice. Um well, I think looking at the the time here, gents, we're we're knocking on for a, a, a little bit here. But what we do need to talk about uh before we crack Whoa, look at that. My stupid uh, bloody setup. My, uh, my man cave. <laughs> Nice. How many different ports can you watch at the same time? Uh, I can at least five. I can get three on one screen over there. <laughs> he does his only fans still. <laughs> and I see some decks there as well into your music. That's no, it's really for my grandson. My grandson loves them, so uh, I, I just push the buttons. I found out that I can make a, a nice mix one already done. And then make it look like I'm turning the knob. So he, he's really impressed with me. He thinks I'm brilliant, but I've just got it on the <laughs> like, like when you press demo on the keyboard that everybody has. Exactly the same, yeah. Pretend, yeah. pretend to play along. <laughs> um, but yeah, so looking into the future for you know, we're we're in the springtime. Summer is is fast approaching now. And, uh, Do you fucking promise? It, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least for the next uh, the next four days. Well, to be fair, it was Where dry for five hours today. Oh, we've had a I dreadful five, the day. Five four hours of dry spell. Quite impressed with that. Lovely, good. Um, well, we got hammered today. It's supposed to be nice the rest of the week, though. Apparently, isn't it? Apparently so. Yeah. Um, okay. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now. We've we've spoken a little bit about the the Whitsun weekender at the end of May at the end of May, isn't it? There. Yeah. Um, and we also know now that the EBIT is being not gonna be happening yeah. in the summer. Um, which is a, a great shame, um, in many ways, but I think it's a, a number of factors that we won't go into now but yeah unfortunately that is is not happening this year um Manx Fest, uh, is there? Manx Fest and that's um it. yeah stitch track i understand that's correct that is um how far away is that june. now Slugs, uh, june is it early june I don't know. We should know, Dan. We only recorded that episode last week. I know, I know. <laughs> well, it should be out. Well, it should be out by the time this goes out. So, uh, Claire's just informed me it's the eighth of June. Eighth of June. There you go. So that's a plug's boarding, and there will be a separate uh, electric event on the Stitch Track as part of um, Mount Fest. That's so it. Is, um, um, you, you were saying that there's different factors. Does it, does it look like eBay will come back next year? We'd hope so. Yeah. I mean, it's not uh, certainly potentially. It's not not through. Um, I mean, bottom line is is it's down to people. Uh, people schedule the people who who run and organise it this year. Um, uh, have ultimately got masses on that can't be avoided. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, that's that's the bottom line. But thankfully, you, you know, you really are in safe hands with Simon and Mark at. at at bugs for that June weekend. Um, yeah, they've been uh, they spent they sort of bit of time this week. Um, <clears throat> open up some more overtaking lines on the track as well, widen it in places. Mm -hmm. And that that will be open to all as well. Um, the EUCs as well will be present, I'm sure. Um, and and the rest of the park will be open to all. Although I don't know whether we're going up up the the board across will be allowed if there's people utilising the park coming down it potentially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, uh, the rest of the park is there to be utilised as well. And and there's there's he's got graffiti arts going on there, the assault course which we talked about last week and in the last episode, um, and uh, bands and all sorts. So it, you know it will be a proper good, a proper good uh, weekend there. Um, and you can take your electrics every weekend to bugs. So this is just um, Mount Fest is only an actual um, competition, a riding race and stuff. But you can go to bugs every weekend with the electrics anyway. Well, so that that track is open. So that track you're talking about. So that's open all the time now, is it? All the that, time. It will be as soon as the centre's open. 
for the season. That track will be open every weekend. Yeah. When, when does that? It's usually open, but it's the weather that's keeping it open. Weather, open. yeah. Weather permitting at the moment. Uh, everywhere is running late. Everywhere's all the bike tracks, the mountain board parks, Dan's place. We should be open. We should be three, two, three weeks into the season. Yeah. But it's just sodden. Everything you can't, even, you can't, you, you can't work the ground. You can't even get a bloody tractor on it to cut the grass in some places. Ho- hopefully, it'll just mean that the season's shifted on a little bit, you know. And yeah. Get it at, at the tail end. It's, it's how it's going, isn't it? I mean, it, it, I was still cutting my grass in November last year. I mean, that's it's unheard of, isn't it? Really, it was still growing. It's, it, we just literally our. Well, we're not going to have summers and winters. We seem to be having wet and dry seasons at the moment. Don't we? Yeah. Well, more, more wet than dry, unfortunately. But more soon. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. But yeah, out, outside of Wits and weekend, anything else that you Carve boys have got in the calendar that we can help put you out there? Yeah. This well, there's rides all the time. Uh, this Saturday we're at Tom Carn. Um, we're billing it as the sort of spring season starter. Just uh, wait, be... Let me just correct you. By the time this goes out, this may <laughs> well yeah. be sort of last weekend. <laughs> ah, okay. How good, was, okay. how good was last weekend's ride, lads? That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you afterwards be well, it, it was it was on the April the twentieth, four twenty. So in the memories, maybe going a little bit crazy there, you know. <laughs> we've, we've done the same with that. It should have been a month ago, and we keep putting it back because of the weather all the time. So it might not have yeah. even happened by then. Yeah. <laughs> and, and maybe after this, we're coming. We are coming over to Gloucester to ride a secret spot on a quiet day. Uh, a few of us, secret mission near Sea Burbeck. Uh, he the said he course. might be up there. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, have you ridden there? Have you, uh, sorry, have you played golf there before? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Mark, Mark played golf most recently. I yeah, I was saying we went before and last. Some friends, yeah. But the, sa- but the same thing, it was so sodden, it's, it's just you, you couldn't ride it. Uh, that was the last bank holiday, actually. We turned up there anyway. But uh, no, it was it was pointless. You couldn't ride it. Well, if you could, you if you would have ridden it, you would have dug it all up, and I don't yeah. think we'd have been very popular okay. at all with anyone uh, else. Actually. No. And um, what about you, hybrids? Are you going to play golf there? I don't know if I'd be, be able to make that one. But I, if I, it I is a Monday. It's, an, it's a it's a yeah. good place. Yeah, definitely definitely worth hitting up. Um, yeah, it's a good it's a good it's a good ride there. Really good. A good round round. Round, round, yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's my Cornish accent coming through. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, yeah, look at the time, gents. We're gonna start to sort of aim to wrap it up. Um, but I'm gonna come individually to you uh, for a sort of roundup from each of you because I know you've, you've probably all got bits and bobs to shout out. I know, James, you do little bits here and there online that, that, that might do well with having uh, shout-outs. You, you've been involved with other podcasts and stuff like that yourself, have you not? Um... I, I, I've given it, a shot, given it a shot. Yeah, like, chat, like chatting about Eastgate. Yeah, well, keep going with it. You never know. You never know where you could end up. I mean... <laughs> but yeah i mean and i'm sure like hybrids you'll be looking to to shout out to the apex crew and stuff um of course yeah. yeah uh yeah take it take it away gents any any shouts or or thanks that you want to give away who's going first i'll go, go then it, you keep going back yeah i'm gonna um, yeah, I'd just like to say thanks to the Apex people for meeting me in the Ambassador Forum. Um, I still find that weird because comparing to everyone else on the team, they're so much better than me. But I don't know. I think you've got to have different levels more than anything else. And I just enjoy riding my electric mating board and just getting out there having fun. Haven't created that much content. Well, actually, since the last Apex weekend, so kind of need to pick the camera up again and start filming. I have got ideas in mind of what I want to do 
it's kind of like a life reset. Um, a lot of things have happened behind closed doors. Finally, come into like realization of like what I want to do and stuff. So yeah, it's just I don't want to touch too much on that because obviously it will be coming to my channel eventually. But I, I there is a lot of change coming to my channel, and it's I don't really want it to be like straight up e skate anymore. Nice. Look well, forward to that. Then. Forward. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, it it might be nice uh, uh, down the line as well for you all to come on individually and we can delve a little bit more into to each of your characters on your own um you know you're all interesting lads that, that have all got your stories to tell that i feel a bit like we haven't really touched on too much here because we've just been having fun and chatting about the the riding as such um but yeah definitely good good luck with the changes in the channel there mark uh you know like one thing i will say is is that everything that i have ever seen has come out of your work online and stuff like that has had such a high level of polish that it, it always looks incredible and professional and no matter what you do mate i'm sure you're gonna absolutely smash it and it'll it'll come i really out. appreciate that i really mate. appreciate it what about you mark any 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 shout outs or anything Basically, to, to the grandson or anything or, or, to, everyone over, to everyone in Eastgate over the last couple of years, I mean, I've been involved now probably three or four years. Mark was one of the first people, and James, and we've 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 become great friends. I've got a lot of great friends from up in London that I would never have thought of now. Uh, yeah, same. The guys over in Bristol, we've got John Goff, John Davy, Bob, and it's just a fantastic community. I've never really heard anybody, and, and truthfully, slag anybody else off or have a go at anyone else. Everyone's always out to help everyone on the group rides. Everyone's in there with a spanner or a screwdriver trying to help you. everyone. And it is just a fantastic community. I just, you know, wish everyone well. Uh, nice. Yeah, 100%. It is a very welcoming and embracing community, especially especially the the e mountain borders out there. Um, I think it's like when you when you see another one in the wild. Ah, ah, one of us, one of us. <laughs> Someone else who gets it, gets the passion. That's it. And what about you then, James? See us out, my friend. Well, it's lovely chatting to you all. Uh, it's a great journey, isn't it? We all love mountain boarding, flying down hills, out of control, up hills. It's just great fun. Look forward to an awesome summer with you all. Enjoy. We'll try. We'll try. And if ever, if ever one of you guys gets a boat and fancies picking uh, us up on the north coast, I reckon it's going to knock at least two hours off the travel time. All right. It used to be the, the ferry years ago, wasn't it? Went back and forth. That's it. That's it. Exactly that. I have um, a question for you, Dan. Yeah, of course, mate. Because obviously, you guys now dabbling in the world of YouTube and everything. Right. What's your perspective on it? And that, do you go in there with like a proper serious head, or are you doing it for the fact of like I'm having fun, you know, I'm, do, I'm going out and the laugh with my mates, or have you got something already preempted up there that's like a, a format? Like, do you know what I mean? What you mean with with make making stuff or content? Content, yeah. Um, well, obviously, I mean this the the podcast. Um, so I understand that this of... is script. Like I understand the podcast, right? But I've seen videos that you've done, and uh, right, you've... okay. So, um, some of the stuff, like the snow, the the stuff where it's if you see us both in front of the camera at the same time, then that generally has been done in the past by Eamon. Yeah, well, uh, who did the one when you kept on taking videos of slogs pissing all the time, man? That, uh, that, oh, that, okay, so that one was me. See, so that, that, that's, okay, you see what I mean? Yeah. So that one, um, the bottoms up, wasn't it? Was what yeah. ended up being cool. That one, obviously, I don't use a selfie stick. I much, think that's a wicked video, man. Much like James, I just hold my phone. That that thing was, that entire thing, we had some GoPro. <laughs> We had a GoPro, but the footage came out really shit and was shaky. Some the settings weren't right or whatever. So most of the footage got binned, to be totally honest with you. And yeah, so the rest of that entire thing was shot with a 
an iPhone in my hand. Um, just, just saying. Um, That's a hell of a video. I really enjoyed that video, man. I, I honestly, could see it. It made though. me laugh, man. It made me laugh. Um, that, no, that we that came about because well, we, we went. It was more of an adventure for me and Dan. Like we wanted to do something. Let's spend a bit of time together. And the idea just kind of like we we'll do, we we'll go from the bottom of the country where we are at the moment, the furthest we can, and try and ride with as many people as we can. And about a few spots sort of just, along the route, and yeah, we sort of threw it together. We we looked at the map, we threw together a plan. Claire, my wife, put together. She worked out how much petrol we use, how much it was going to cost, and stuff like that. There was spreadsheets and stuff like that. That that got a bit serious at points, didn't it? When it was only we were just going to throw all our shit in the van and go riding at one stage. <laughs> yeah. It might have made it might have made a slightly more chaotic film than it already was. Had <laughs> that been the case, and it looked like you just all had so much fun, and and that's what it's all about, man. Capturing yeah. those memories. It, ex exactly that. I mean, we we didn't set out with any sort of ideas other than spots we wanted to ride and just relied on 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 the fun or, or, or and the you know what actually happens sort of thing I, I never plan anything if i if i go out to film i've got some kind of idea of what i'm going to do because you, you've got to have some kind of format yeah. but i go to a new place i don't know what, what's happening there like if i go went to cyclo park or when i went to with mark up in um, castle cork the, the, the um, off-road part, I don't know why I'm an experience, but I'm, I, it's it's trying to capture the fun because I, I try to add a bit of comedy into my videos because it's, it's just who I am, like, do you know I mean? And, and riding with good people, you're obviously going to have share that fun with them as well. It, yeah, that's it. I mean, me, me and... I can't do serious anymore, man. And, and I, <laughs> I just... Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> I, yeah, there's no point in us pair trying to do serious because we just we just can't do it. It seems staged. The, the only, the of, only thing I feel. that the biggest edit that I have to do is to scale it back because if we were to release everything <laughs> everything we would get thrown off of YouTube. Like, wow, yeah, they, okay, they, yeah, see, that's the, it's like that's the tame, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah I mean? see. Like, okay, so things like some of the things on that on that video that's just come to mind, like him, him running through the fields, like having a shower was legit. I want to have a shower and we, I haven't had one, and I just said to him, Why don't you stop there? So I said, So he said, Go on then. And, and it just we just literally pulled the car over and then just did it. It's all it's yeah, all spontaneous. Yeah. There's not um, Oh yeah, that was but, yeah, completely spontaneous. There's no <clears throat> set and... But we've always had a motto of for a happy and fulfilling life, always give in to what slogger? Peer pressure. And and oh, he, yeah, he yeah. pressurizes me and I pressure him. It's That's the, the rules, man. Line. Is that beer it's pressure? Just, it's no, just peer pressure. Oh, right, right, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I find even like when you collaborate with different people, like J J um, Cheshire Scrubbers, right? It took me ages to finally actually meet him. Uh, I didn't even do a proper video with him because we were jelling so much and just having fun. None of us whipped the camera out. And when we did whip the camera out, it was just funny content instead. Uh, he's doing so well now over the fucking you know, other side of the world, you know, I, BP, like, you know, New York, keen in it in New York traffic. Ah, man. Yeah, I, That's crazy. I'm getting stuck between coaches, for fuck's sake. Jeez. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, J, J, JD's a force unto himself, though, isn't he? And and I oh, think yeah. that's, that's the, the bottom line. Me and, me and Slogs, we, we aren't no wallflowers is the you know we're not i suppose we are quite outgoing people generally and and when we when we get together it just amplifies uh, the same way as when you guys all of us together, i guarantee you, you guys are all giggling it's 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 no different it's just that same kinship that's found through a joint enjoyment of 
of a pastime that is electric mountain boarding. And and that, ladies and gentlemen, Rich. is that episode of the Dirt E mountain board. <laughs> Way I man. That was dead canny as out that lake. Cheers for turning out and listen. Now, before you gan yem, didn't forget, if you wanna keep getting doing with the dirty dot fun, like and subscribe, get amongst it. Shy Ben's getting out. <laughs>